Hello everyone, in this video I would like to show you one of the strongest builds I've made so far which is a Burning Arrow Elementalist. This build can tackle pretty much all the endgame content in the game with very minimal investment and it's incredibly strong due to a couple of things. First of all, 3.10 brought some very powerful notables for Ignite builds. Here are a couple of those notables that we make use of with Blowback and Wasting Affliction being the strongest ones. We are using two medium clusters, uh, cluster jewels in the passive tree with some of these mods and alongside these jewels we are making use of some of the new influenced items that were added in 3.9 to get an incredible amount of damage on our burning arrow. For our weapon we are using a Zaf's Nurture which is a one chaos bow that has very solid base damage, a lot of recovery and most importantly it gives us a 7th link for our burning arrow. And we are also making use of SNS Chant to trigger 3 different spells as we are attacking with our burning arrow. Our SNS Chant will trigger flammability, wave of conviction and steel skin for us for like free basically. Uh, as you can see, like once you get your burning arrow debuffs on a target, the build has incredibly strong and consistent single target damage. For defense, as an elementalist we get elemental ailment immunity, a lot of physical damage mitigation thanks to our chaos golem, basalt flask and endurance charges. We are using acrobatics and phase acrobatics for a lot of dodge. Uh, we, we have a pretty solid life pool and a lot of life sustain thanks to our cinder swallow and Zaf's nurture. I've killed pretty much all the big bosses in the game with this character and the bossing video, the video where I kill endgame bosses, will be up tomorrow so stay, like, stay tuned to the channel and you can see how this build does against the endgame bosses yourself. Um, before I move on with the guide I just want to quickly say that I stream on twitch.tv slash so feel free to like stop by my stream and come hang out with me. Um, thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video guys. Before we talk about the gear I just want to like say this, uh, don't be intimidated by some of the items I have. Because as you can see I'm like quite a bit overcapped on my resistances. Uh, regardless let's get into it. For our weapon we are using a Zaf's Nurture. It's a 1 Chaos Bow that has like really solid base damage. Uh, it will give you a 7th link on your Burning Arrow which is Ignite Proliferation. Like amazing gem for the build. And finally it will recover quite a bit of life whenever you ignite an enemy. So it's like really good for life sustain as well. For our helmet we are using the SNS Chant. SNS Chant will trigger uh, socketed spells whenever you attack with your bow. And in here we have Wave of Conviction, uh, Steel Skin and also Flammability. You will trigger all these spells as you're attacking with your bow, so the helmet, helmet is like really nice for quality of life. Our wave of conviction is also linked with combustion, so it will not only apply fire exposure to enemies, but it will also like reduce enemies resistances even further thanks to combustion. So once again it's like incredible for damage. For our belt we are using Diodeon Dawn. Uh, this is pretty much a no-brainer for this type of build because it will give like an insane amount of damage with your ignites. Um, this belt is like fairly common so you can get some cool implicits. Uh, you can get attack speed, movement speed or life so look out for those as well. I'm also using a Malachi's Artifice to easily apply elemental equilibrium to enemies. I have my Orb of Storms in here. Uh, the Orb of Storms is also super nice for like proccing your elemental overload. Uh, usually with ignite builds like you can also take the elemental equilibrium from the passive tree because your Orb of Storms will like keep applying elemental equilibrium to your favor. But with this build like Burning Arrow you have to keep hitting the enemies and stack up your debuffs. So I decided to go, uh, go with Malachi's Artifice instead of getting the Elemental Equilibrium on the passive tree. For your gloves, your amulet and your quiver, you're looking for either Hunter or Shaped Influences bases. Like in these slots, uh, these bases can roll the fire damage over time multiplier epics as you can see, like I have it on each one of my items. Uh, like you can either look for the items with some fire damage over time multi, some life and some resistances. Or if you, like, if you want to craft it yourself, uh, buy Hunter influenced items and then use some Scorch Fossils. Uh, Scorch Fossils will make it easy for you to get that fire damage over time multi epics and on top of that as I said earlier you're looking for some life and resistances. Uh, crafting some decent items isn't, like, isn't really hard and also the Scorch Fossils are super cheap so if the market for these items are expensive as I have said earlier just buy the Hunter influenced items and then spam some Scorch Fossils. And ideally for your uh, Amulet and your Quiver you're also looking for elemental damage with attacks as well so keep that in mind. For your boots, uh, once again Hunter Influenced Boots because you can get that Ignite Steel Damage Faster mod, like that fourth mod. Uh, this is a more multiplier on your damage so it's amazing. Uh, if the market is expensive, once again you can craft it with some Scorch Fossils by the Hunter Influence base. And then finally for your other ring, uh, I would recommend buying a high item level Opal Ring. Use some Abrasive Catalyst for the quality and then spam uh, some of these essences. Uh, you can either go for Anger Essences or some Fire Damage. Or you can go for the Anguish Essences which will give you like fire damage to attacks, like both of these are good options. So that's all the gear. For Flasks, uh, Bleed Immunity, Divine Life Flask, Enduring Divine Mana Flask of Boarding for the Curse Removal and also, and also Mana Sustain, uh, Quicksilver Flask of Adrenaline, always your go-to. Uh, Cinder Swallow will give you a lot of recovery, 
and a lot of uh, damage against ignited enemies. Uh, the crit chance mod on this isn't really necessary, so if you can't afford this, just go for like a regular Cinder Swallow. Uh, the crit chance will make it a bit easier for you to like proc your elemental overload, so it's nice for quality of life, but definitely not necessary. Uh, like if you can't afford the Cinder Swallow, just go for like a regular Silver Flask. And then finally a Basalt Flask of Acceleration for some extra attack speed and some physical damage mitigation. Uh, so that's all the flasks. Okay, so for gems, our burning arrow was linked with elemental damage with attacks, deadly ailments, uh, greater multiple projectiles, uh, burning damage, and then finally immolate. Uh, if you can't afford the six link, drop the immolate. And for single target, we'll be swapping out the GMP for uh, swift affliction. Uh, in our helmet, we have a wave of convictions, flammability, steel skin, and combustion, as I've said earlier. I have my golems in a six link because, as an elementalist, like it is very important to keep your golems alive. Uh, we have a flame golem, a lightning golem, chaos golem, and then finally an ice golem. Uh, like if you get some accuracy from your gear, you can drop the ice golem later on, but it is very important to cap your accuracy, so keep that in mind. You can drop this for a stone golem later on. Uh, like and for a six link, we are using uh, minion life and also meat shield as well for our golems. Like using both of these makes your golems very tanky, so like they rarely die even against the hardest content in the game. Uh, we have a herald of ash for some extra damage, malevolence once again extra damage, uh, enduring cry for the endurance charges. Like the physical damage mitigation definitely helps. I have my swift affliction here for the gem swap, uh, you can like take this out, put something in, whatever you want. Uh, we have a dash with second wind, dash, that dash feels like incredibly smooth uh, compared to flame dash. Uh, you can go for whatever you want, it's up to your preference. Uh, blood rage for some like extra attack speed and also like friendly charge generation uh, while mapping. And then precision for the accuracy, as I've said earlier, the accuracy is important. And also like this is one thing I forgot to mention in the gear section. Uh, you can use a shield with, uh, shield with plus two to minimum frenzy charges in your offhand. And just like weapon swap for bosses, uh, this will give you two frenzy charges for like 10 seconds. So like you can use this technique against bosses. Keep that in mind as well. For the passive tree, we are playing an elementalist. As an elementalist, you get like more golems, uh, like effectiveness of your golems, elemental ailment immunity. Uh, like you, you get to chill and shock enemies for free, and then you also get like a lot more damage with your ignite. So it's a really like strong ascendancy for this type of character. Like as I've said earlier in the video, we are making use of two cluster jewels on the passive tree. Like one right here. And then the second one is right here. Your ideal cluster jewel is basically a blowback, wasting affliction, and then a jewel socket. Like getting those three is gonna be rough, so when you're looking for cluster jewels, uh, prioritize getting blowback and then a jewel socket. And for the third one, you can get like cooked alive or um, any of these mods right here. Like instead of the blowback, you can also like get uh, wasting affliction as well. So like actually, when you're looking for cluster jewels, prioritize getting one of like either blowback or wasting affliction, a jewel socket. And for the third one, like go for any of these mods. For your regular jewels, you're looking for some attack speed, life, and then maybe like burning damage or fire damage. Uh, the attack speed just like makes the build feel smoother, so I would recommend going for it. Like it makes it faster for you to stack up your burning arrow debuffs. Um, anointment options, lava lash is your best bet for damage, but it requires a golden oil, so early on you can go for something like arsonist, like I did. Um, other than that, you know, I will just like let you take a look at the passive tree. I will also put like Path of Building link in the description if you want to like, copy it from there. For Pantheons, as always, Soul of Shikari for the poison immunity while you're mapping. And for bosses, swap it out to Rislatha. And for the big one, you can go for whatever you want. For leveling, uh, leveling the character is incredibly easy. Burning Arrow will be available from level 1. Like you can grab some of these items uh, to like make it easier on yourself. Nalakai's Artifice will be a level, uh, available from level 5, so definitely make use of this as well. Uh, early on, you're, you're not gonna get the Ignite Proliferation from your Zoff's Nurture. So like, uh, go for the actual gem itself, like use the gem in your main uh, 6 link or 5 link, whatever you have. Uh, let me actually show you the passive tree at the progression as well. Early on, you're gonna be rushing for elemental overload. Get your cluster jewel in here and go for the ignite stuff in here. Like that's gonna be your first goal. Uh, mid game, you're gonna go for the fire damage in here. And from that, go to the uh, shadow starting area. Like get the life in here, get the cluster jewel acrobatics. Uh, late game, like you'll, go, you'll be going down this minion route, get this minion stuff in here. Uh, for ascendancy progression, you're going to grab Beacon of Ruin first and then go for Elemencer. Okay, so that's gonna be it for this character, guys. Uh, as I said earlier, the bossing video for this character, you know, like, like the video where I kill endgame bosses, will be up tomorrow or like the other day, I'm not sure. Uh, it will be up in a couple days, so like if you wanna see how this build does against the endgame bosses, uh, stay tuned for that video. If you enjoyed the video, you know, please consider liking and subscribing, I would really appreciate that. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to ask me, like you can stop by the stream at twitch.tv slash Once again, thank you so much for watching guys, I hope you have an awesome day, and I'll see you in the next one.